nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power.
continue to worship him today, family. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never today because you rose from the dead you defeated sin and death and you conquered the grave and because of that we have eternal life in you there is nothing in this world that is like you because of the love that you have for us so Jesus we love you we honor you and we worship you in your precious name we pray and everyone says amen well, thank you so much for joining us here at New Hope Windward. We are so glad that you're here for our Easter service. And happy Easter.
Happy Easter, everybody, and welcome to New Hope Windward. My name is Todd. And I'm Maria. We're super excited to celebrate Easter with all of you. We have a few announcements to share with you. Maria, before we go any further, just for fun, can I share an Easter joke? Go ahead. Okay, how do Easter eggs feel after an egg hunt? How? Exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Like I said earlier, we have a few quick announcements to share with you. But before we do, we're going to worship God through our giving. Our primary mission of New Hope Windward is to help people who are hurting and in need in our local community and across the world. Every year, New Hope Windward gives hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to financially support 20 plus partner ministries that are changing lives. One local ministry we partner with is the Hawaii Salvation Army. One of their many outreach programs, Noho'olu, is a residential safe house for abused teenage girls on the Big Island, dedicated to bringing God's love, healing, and the care and support needed for them to get a fresh start on life. Take a look. I'm 17 years old, and I'm from Kauai. I'm 17 years old, I'm from Kausai. I am 15, was born in Oahu. It was hard growing up. I never had a childhood. My dad was a drunk. He was abusive. They get their liquor, they get drunk, they start flying stuff, yelling and stuff. I got raped by my dad when I was three. Then he died. My dad, he was very abusive. He was getting into hard drugs. And there was this one time, I think he was thinking I was my mom, because then he started hitting me like my mom. And he started hitting my head into the wall, and then to, the, to a point where there was a hole. Our girls' safe house, Noho Olu, which means living in grace. Primarily, we deal with girls who are involved with the juvenile justice system, and a lot of them are runaways. I'm getting involved in substance abuse, um, you know, not going to school. Our thing is to assess and find out what was going on and how can we get the services that they need um, to get them back on that right track. We do therapy, treatment, involve family therapy, so trying to give them the tools to help them so when they go back home, it's easier to cope instead of running and going back to their old ways. They can stay between six to nine months, our goal is always to reunify family. We've always been here to help our families get back together with the right services and make sure all the things like, this is what people and kids need. You know, not so like rough and chaotic, but like caring and loving and like being there emotionally. God is all about love. And if you love unconditionally, the kids are going to see it. Knowing that you have that unconditional love and people who actually care for you and like want the best for you, it's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. I don't know if they realize it, but they, they filled a, a big hole in my heart. They put some pieces back that was, that was lost. Well, Todd, what a powerful way to help many of these teenage girls turn from a life filled with abuse and trauma to one where they can now lead healthy, productive lives. So thank you, New Hope. Because of you, we're able to bring healing and wholeness to many vulnerable youth here in Hawaii. If you call New Hope your home church, you can honor God with your giving so we can continue to touch and transform lives. Now, if you're a guest, it's our policy to ask you to not give anything. We're just really glad that you're here. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three easy, safe and secure ways to donate, or you can scan the QR code. Also, by clicking the button on the upper right-hand corner of your screen, it'll take you to our website where you can give a one-time gift or have it recurring. Would you bow your heads as I lead us in prayer? Lord Jesus, you once said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so in modeling after your heart of compassion for others, we gladly share our resources with ministries like the Hawaii Salvation Army to bring healing and wholeness to abused youth here in our state. Would you use what we give today to make a difference in the lives of the hurting? It's in your name we pray. Amen. 
If you're joining us for the first time, we're so excited that you're here. We have a special welcome gift for you. It's a New Hope Windward stainless steel tumbler. To pick one up, simply fill out the info card in your bulletin and drop it off at guest services in the lobby after service, or you can scan the QR code and we'll mail you a tumbler as our way of saying, welcome to New Hope. Our regular service times are 8 and 10 a.m. at Regal Cinemas every Sunday. We'd love to have you join us for a time of great worship music and inspiring messages by our pastors. Okay, Maria, one last joke. What do you call a transformer bunny? What? Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, right? That was good. <laughs> well, Todd, we have more in store for our Easter program, so we'd better hop to it. So everyone, enjoy the rest of service and Happy Easter!
beautiful. And would you extend that applause to our worship team for the music they shared with us? Wasn't that great? Well, happy Easter, everybody. Welcome to New Hope Windward. If this is your first time, my name is Dave. I'm one of the pastors on the teaching team. And we are so honored that you are with us today. We are one church that meets in five different locations. So I want to greet everybody on the other side of the camera. I want to say hi to everybody here in the Regal Cinemas joining us. I want to say hi to everybody across the street at the plaza. We're so glad you're with us. Happy Easter. I want to say aloha to everybody at Ann Pearl in Kaneohe. And then we also want to say hi to everybody at church online around the world. It's awesome to have you with us today. And then I want to give a special shout out to the 300 uh, men and women who are in two correctional centers where we broadcast our services to weekly. We have 200 women joining us in Kailua at the Women's Community Correctional Center. And then we also have 120 guys in the Faith Pod in Saguaro, Arizona, in the Correctional Center. Let's welcome everybody. Happy Easter. We're so honored to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ with you. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was at Foodland, and I was in the produce section. And this guy came up to me, and he goes, hey, how's it? I'm like, oh, hey, how's it? He goes, I watch you all the time on TV. I don't think, oh, that's cool. He watches our church services on his TV. And then he looks at his wife and he says to her, he says, that's the guy on the news. <laughs> news? He's all, he says to his wife, that's the guy I watch all the time on the news. And I'm like, oh, this guy thinks I'm a news anchor. <laughs> I'm thinking, which one, you know? I'm thinking, like, you know, the guys that get my hair color, like Keaki Tucker, right? And I'm like, oh, no. And then he says again, he's all excited. He's like, that's the guy I watch all the time on the news. I just met the guy on the news. And, I, and I, he was so excited. I didn't have the heart to tell him, sorry, I'm not the guy on the news, you know? And so if by chance you're the guy that I met at Foodland a couple weeks ago, I just want to say, sorry, brother, I'm so sorry. I'm not Keaki Tucker. My name is Kovika Bar. <laughs> <laughs> but after I talked to him and his wife, I, I <clears throat> walked away and I got a kick out of that. I thought, that's, that's so cute. They think I'm on, he thinks I'm on the news. And I thought, well, I'm not on the news on TV, but I do share the news all the time. As a pastor, I share the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're celebrating today with over 2 billion Christians around the world. We're celebrating the greatest event that happened in history. It split history from you know, like BC, AD. Like that's how powerful the resurrection was. And you all know the Easter story. God sent his son Jesus to pay for the sins of mankind. And Jesus died on a cross to pay for those sins. And then three days later, he rose from the grave and he said, I'm back. And he proved who he said he was. He proved by, his, by the power of the resurrection that he was God. Now, now, most of us know the first part of that story, but many people don't know the second part of the Easter story, and that's how Easter involves you. Take a look at this verse, talks about it. 2 Corinthians 5.15 says, Jesus included everyone in his death, all of us. So everyone could be included in his life. Say it with me, a far better life than people lived on their own. And so Easter is about you experiencing a far better life than you can experience on your own. And let me say this. You may be a Christian for years upon years. God still has more for you. And so we built this church around the blessings of the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we have these spiritual processes, these blessings that we want you to experience. So we want you to get to know God. Now, a lot of people know about God but they don't know God personally. Now, please hear this. God doesn't want a religion with you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to, you and him to get so close that you actually like him. So close that you do life with him throughout the week. So close that you're looking forward to coming to church on Sundays. So close that you're like, he's a very real and a very alive God. Now, check this out. When you get to know God closely and personally, you also get to experience his resurrection power. Look at this amazing verse, favorite Easter verse in the Bible. Ephesians 1.19, this is actually a prayer. 
that the Apostle Paul wrote. And he says, I want you to know about the great and mighty power that God has for who? Us followers. It is the same wonderful power God used when he raised Christ from death and let him sit at the right hand side in heaven. So this is unbelievable. Like that same power that got Jesus out of the grave is available to you for your problems, your pressures, those draining people you got to deal with, the challenges in life. It's available to you and I. And so we want you to know God so that you can experience this freedom. You know that thing in your life where you're like, man, I wish this wasn't in my life. You know what I'm talking about? That thing that is in your life and you're just like, ah, if this wasn't in my life, my life would be so much better. I saw somebody just point to somebody. We're not talking about that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was so hilarious. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> but since that came up, let me say this. God can help you experience freedom with the draining people in your life. Can I hear a good Amen. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> But the freedom that God wants you to experience is what the world is chasing after. Everybody wants freedom. And, and, and what God has for you is freedom from your past, from those, those regrets, that shame. He has freedom within your problems. You're like, man, I got peace. I should not have peace with what I'm going through. He has freedom to set you free from your hurts, your resentments, your, your habits, and those things that hang you up. Because who the sun sets free is free indeed. And so there is power for you on this Easter Sunday and far beyond. And then we want to help you also experience the blessing of discovering God's plans and purposes for your life. Have you ever asked this question like, man, what, what's, what's my purpose? Like, why did God put me here on earth? Have you ever thought about this? Like, why did God give you certain talents and strengths that he didn't give other people? Why did he give you certain gifts and talents and experiences that only you have? Well, he gave you many of those things to point you towards his purposes. And, and let me say this. God has many plans and purposes for your life. A lot of people think their purpose is their career. Like, people look at me and they go, well, you're a pastor. You discovered your purpose. Well... This is one part of God's purpose for my life, but he has plans and purposes for me as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as, a, as somebody who serves in the community. He has many plans and purposes for my life far beyond my career, and we want to help you discover God's plans and purposes. And let me just say this. If you've been a Christian a long time, these things are always happening. It's not like you get to know God once. Like, you can ex get to know him more and more and more, and you can experience more freedom in certain areas and challenges that you have right now. And he has more plans and purposes for your life, even if you're in your career that God chose you to do. Does that make sense? So this is something that's always going on, and this is why we're about this as a church. And then we want to help you fulfill your destiny. Once you know God's plans and purposes, then God wants you to actually live them out, to do them. And... You know what's so great is that when you live God's destiny, when you're living out his plans and purposes, please, please hear this. It is so fulfilling. I'm not saying it isn't hard because it can be hard, but it is so fulfilling. And you can't find this true fulfillment in your career. You can't find this in a vacation, in money, in possessions, in pleasure. True fulfillment comes from fulfilling your destiny. And so this is what we're about here constantly. You could be here 20 years and we're, we still want you to get to know God, experience more freedom, discover his plans and purposes for you this week and next week and the months ahead. And we want you to fulfill that destiny because catch this, when you do this and you take your final breath here on earth, when you get to heaven, you're going to see Jesus and you're going to just, the Bible says we're all going to cry. God's going to wipe every tear from our eyes. I think it's going to be happy tears. And we're just going to be blown away at the rewards that we have in heaven because we did this. This is so important. Because when you get to heaven, you're going to be blown away. 
blown away. It's going to be so worth it. So worth it. In fact, speaking of heaven, would you like to hear a fun story about heaven? Well, you're going to hear it anyway, because I got the mic, so. <laughs> so this guy from New Hope uh, passed away, and he went to heaven, and, he, and St. Peter greeted him at the pearly gates. Peter says, welcome to heaven. Come, I'll show you around. So Peter takes him down this long, heavenly hallway to this huge warehouse in heaven. And this warehouse was filled with choke clocks. There was millions of clocks everywhere. And the guy says to St. Peter, he's like, what's the deal with all these clocks? And St. Peter says, oh, those are called sin clocks. The guy says, sin clocks? What's a sin clock? Peter says, well, when a person sins, the clock ticks here in heaven. He's like, really? He goes, yeah. So if a person sins a little, barely ticks. If they sin a lot, it ticks a lot. He goes, wow. Peter goes, yeah, there's a sin clock here in heaven for everybody at New Hope Windward. The guy goes, really? He goes, really? In fact, we have a sin clock for everybody in the world up here. So the guy says to Peter, says, well, can I ask you a question? Peter says, yeah, sure. He says, where is Pastor Dave's sin clock? <laughs> and Peter says, oh, Pastor Dave is really well known here in heaven. And the guy goes, really? He goes, yes. In fact, we keep his clock in the office. We use it as a fan. <laughs> I don't care what you say. That's funny. That's funny. And I shared that story with you because, uh, first of all, there are no sin clocks in heaven because there's not a hint of sin in the entire place. But the other reason I share that with you is, I don't know about you, but when I was like 25 years old, I went to church, and I was in the service kind of like you're at, and I thought, I have no business being here. Like, these people are not my people. I, my people are partiers. Uh, I am not a Christian. I don't even believe in God. And I looked around this church and I thought, you know, I think a lot of these people have their life way more together than I do. And if you're feeling that way at all, let me just tell you, you are surrounded by sinners. These new hopers, they sin plenty. <laughs> no, no, no. no, the truth is, is we're all sinners in need of a Savior. Isn't that right, everybody? And we're all a work in progress. None of us has it all together. We just don't. We're all a work in progress. We're all under construction still. And so um, we just want you to know, man, just come as you are. We invite you to come as you are. Uh, uh, this church is not a country club for saints. This is a hospital for the hurting. This is for people that are going through real life, that are honest and real, not pretending and fake. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. How's your life? Oh, it sucks, but praise God. <laughs> Don't slap anybody, sorry. Last service, I'm feeling really relaxed right now. This is kind of fun, so you get, you get the worst of me. <laughs> so anyway, just come as you are, because listen, when you engage in the good news of Jesus Christ and what God has for you, you'll never remain the same. So it's okay, come here. It's okay to not be okay, but you'll never remain the same. Can I say, can you say amen to that, everyone? So just come as you are. In fact, next Sunday, we're launching a series called Weary. And, you know, as a pastor, I get to meet a lot of people. And, you know, everybody has challenges and problems, you know, myself included. We all go through that. That's life. And, you know, a lot of people, they're not like physically tired. But when I talk to them, they're like, I'm just weary from the problems, the pressures, and some of the people in my life. Can any of you relate to that? Just like, man, my job, oh, it's hard, or our finances, oh, or my marriage is difficult, or this kid is super hard, and they're just weary, they're fatigued. And so next week, we're going to launch a series, and we're going to learn from God's Word, like, how do we find rest in this hurried world that we live in? How do we find true rest? Now, I want to say this, whether you're weary or not, I encourage you to come, because there's just seasons in my life and your life when we're more weary than other seasons and you may not be weary now but i encourage you to come because i think you'll find some things that'll be helpful for you all right so take a look up on the screen how are you how how much of this are you experiencing like would you say man i just know god like oh we're so close or how about freedom how much freedom are you experiencing in christ how about this you discovering his plans and purposes etc 
Now, how do we experience this? Because I talk to a lot of Christians, they say, I'm not really experiencing it this, this much. I'm just not. So Dave, how do I experience more of this? Well, if you're taking notes, uh, take a look up on the screen. If you want to experience what we're talking about, the resurrection power of Jesus is, say it with me, it's activated at the level of our submission and our commitment to him. So catch this. If you want to experience more of God's freedom, his power, his peace, his joy, his fulfillment, his plans, his purposes, his destiny for your life, it's dependent upon how submitted and how committed you are to Christ. And this is why you'll see some people that that actually will come to church, but they're not really experiencing much of it. And it's because throughout the week, they're not as committed and submitted to Christ. Does that make sense? And so this raises the question, which is, what's your level of commitment to Christ? Now, don't answer this out loud. This is between you and God. But what's your level of submission to God? What's your level of devotion to him? Like, is there anything in your life that you're doing that you don't want to do, but you're doing it because God's asking you to do it? Like, I don't want to forgive them, but I'm choosing to because Christ commands me to. Or I'm staying in this job because God wants me here and I don't want to be in this job or this marriage or this fill in the blank. If you are wholly committed to God, some of you say, Dave, I am wholly committed to God. Man, my relationship with God is growing. Uh, I, I, I pray throughout the week. I talk story uh, with God. I do life with him. I'm in his word, like pretty much daily. I, I'm, you know, I'm not perfect, but I, I'm like submitted and devoted to Christ and following him and his destiny for my life. If that's you, you might say, Dave, I'm committed. I'm wholeheartedly committed. Others of you say, Dave, I'm not here, but I'm more casually committed to Christ. Like, you know, Dave, if I'm just honest, I, I don't pray as much. Sometimes I read the word during the week, but not usually. Uh, I go to church here and there. Um, yeah, submitted, uh, uh, it's more casual than committed. And if that's you, that's where you're at, okay? And then some of you might say, well, Dave, I'm not even casually committed. I'm like unengaged. What does that mean? That means like, it, it could mean a few things. It means like I used to have a relationship with God, but I don't have a relationship with him now. Uh, or it could mean I've never had a relationship with God. It could mean I, I don't believe in the Bible. I don't believe in God. I, I, you know, I just, that's just where I'm at. And let me say, if that's you, if you have lots of doubts about the Bible, Jesus, God, like welcome to our church. This is a safe place for you to explore that. When I came to church, I had thousands of doubts about the Bible. I did not believe that God was Jesus. I didn't believe he rose from the dead. I thought that was a joke. Like, yeah, right. And then I studied the evidence, and I was like, oh, wow. And, I, and more importantly, catch this, I got to encounter him. And my prayer is that you don't just know God, you experience God and go, I know God. Or it's undeniable. That's why, honestly, that's why there's two billion plus Christians. Because Jesus died thousands of years ago. It's because people have encountered Christ. And that's our hope. So just come as you are. We love to have you. Now, where are you at? What's your level of commitment to Christ? Now, I want to say this up front. Please hear this. I am not having you answer this question to make you feel guilt and shame. Not at all. The reason I want you to evaluate this is that Easter is about awakening. And I want you to experience this. I want you to experience more freedom and peace and fulfillment and joy and, and fulfill your destiny. But these things happen based on our level of submission and commitment to Christ. Because that's what activates God's power and blessings. People say to me, Hi, I'm a Christian, but God's not you know, blessing me. And then I always just want to say, well, what's your level of commitment and submission to him? Because that's the first step. Does that make sense? So I want you to experience this in your life. That's why we're evaluating it. And um, so in the New Testament of the Bible, there's a letter called Ephesians. It's written by the Apostle Paul to a group of Christians. He planted this church in Ephesus about 10 to 12 years um, you know, prior and what had happened was is that these Ephesus Christians, 
they, when they first were following Christ, they were wholeheartedly committed to Christ. They were fully submitted and committed. But then over time, uh, their, their city had a lot of distractions. There was a lot going on. And their commitment to Christ moved from committed to casual, to unengaged. And so they had become spiritually sleepy, spiritually complacent, spiritually apathetic. They had been lulled to sleep by the distractions of this world. And I thought, man, that's, that's what can happen to us. There's a lot of distractions in this world. Oh, my goodness. There's so many things to do besides being committed to Christ. And so Paul writes this letter to these people who are spiritually sleepy, and he says these words. He says, wake up, sleeper. He says, rise up from your spiritual sleepiness. And if you rise up from your spiritual complacency, watch this. He says, Christ will, say it with me, he'll shine on you. What does that mean? He says, if you wake up from the spiritual casualness, complacency, Christ is then going to shine his blessing on you, his favor, his power, like you used to experience. And so Easter is a time for awakening. And so I was thinking about like how, uh, there are times that God will use certain alarms to wake us up from our spiritual sleepiness. Um, so I have a few alarms up here on stage I want to go through. By show of hands, how many of you use your cell phone as your alarm to wake you up in the morning? Lift your hands up all over locations. Use your cell phone. Yeah, lots of hands up. I do too. I use my phone. Um, have you uh, noticed how many different alarm sounds there are to choose from? Like, there's some really unique alarm sounds. Some of them, I think, are kind of confusing. Like, uh, can you imagine waking up to this in the morning? You're like, oh, who's at the door? It's so early. Is that the pizza guy? <laughs> you know, it's like, there's just some really unique ones here. Listen to this one. You know, you're like, are there ducks outside my door? Here's what I know about alarms is that an alarm in order to wake you up it has to be disruptive. It has to be annoying enough to wake you up and then get you up to turn it off. Isn't that right? And here's what I believe is that for some of you, um, there are some alarms going off in your life that God is using to draw you close to him. I want to be clear. I'm not saying he's necessarily causing those alarms, but he'll use them to draw you to him, to rise up so that you can experience Christ shining on you. Take a look at this verse here. For sometimes God uses sorrow. He'll use struggles. He'll use suffering in our lives. I'm not saying he always causes it, but he'll use it in our lives to help us what? Turn away from the direction we're going and then turn to him and seek eternal life so that we can experience his destiny, his freedom, his purposes and plans. And so I believe that for some of you, God brought you here because there's some alarms, some struggles in your life, some suffering. Maybe it's relationally, financially, vocationally. And God's just saying, hey, over here, I got so much more for you. I have a far better life. So I have some alarms here up on stage. How many of you, by show of hands, and don't feel any shame about this, how many of you, by show of hands, you're like a snoozer? When the alarm goes off, you like to snooze it, and you, you might snooze a few times before you get up. I'm a snoozer. How many of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lift your hands up. Okay, yeah. I can see some of you didn't lift your hands because you're snoozing right now. Um, <laughs> this is an alarm you might like. So check out this alarm clock. So what you do is you set it, and then you place it on your bedroom floor, like that, and then you go to sleep, and then when the alarm goes off in the morning, it goes bam, 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 and it starts spinning around your room. And in order to turn it off, you have to rise up, get out of bed, and chase this thing around your room <laughs> until you finally get it, and then turn it off. And I was thinking about it, I was thinking like, sometimes there's some things in our life that like we, an alarm's gone off, like there's some struggle or situation that we should deal with, but instead of dealing with the issue, we kind of hit the snooze. You ever done that like I have? I've had times in the past where my finances were kind of out of order. I'm like, ah, I just hit the snooze. I'll deal with that later. I've had other times, alarm's going off in a relationship, and I'm like, ah, I don't want to deal with this. Ah, I just hit the snooze. 
And it didn't get better, it got worse. And so sometimes there will be a, a situation, a struggle that we need to wake up from where God says, just wake up you people who are asleep, rise up. In other words, deal with the issue, the alarm that's going off in your life. And when you rise up and deal with it and you commit to Christ wholeheartedly, watch this, then Christ will shine his blessings and power and favor on you. So what God's saying to some of us here is, hey, I know there's some struggles and some stuff going on. I want to help you with that. So rise up, deal with it, and I will help you through that. Would you say amen to that, everyone? Okay, here's another alarm here. Uh, how many of you would say, Dave, I'm a real deep sleeper? You'd say, Dave, I just, I sleep hard. I used to sleep real hard. I don't anymore because I have kids. Okay, so <laughs> how many of you say you're a hard sleeper? You might, like you have a hard time getting out of bed? You might want this one. <clears throat> this one cracks me up. This, this alarm, I'm not making this up. This is called the sonic bomb. And when this alarm goes off, it is so loud. It's like, ah, 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 ah. And then it's not only loud, it's got this vibrating shaker that you place underneath your pillow. And when this alarm goes off, it's not only going, bah, bah, bah. this thing starts to shake violently like you're in an earthquake. Your head starts going like this, and it's like, wake up! And I, when I saw this, I thought, you know what? I've had problems in my life that just sh shook me awake. Just waked me up. Probably about eight years ago, my wife came to me and said, I don't know if I can be married to you any longer. What? I thought our marriage was good. And she shared, my heart has grown cold towards you. Let me tell you, that rocked me big time. I was like, God, you have my attention. Whatever I need to do to change, I'm all ears. Because I love this woman with all my heart, and I'm open. I not only woke up, I rose up. And I said, God, whatever you want, I will do. I started getting into Christian counseling, though I didn't want to. I... Uh, we started learning how to handle arguments differently. Uh, we started processing things from the past, because we've been married for years. And slowly over time, you know what Christ did? He shined his light on our marriage. And he took this dying marriage, and his power resurrected it, where today we are more in love than we've ever been. We're like newlyweds. She texts me, I can't wait till you come home. I'm like, I can't wait to see you. Happy Easter, little Easter bunny. You know, it's like, I didn't do that. I was waking you guys up. I didn't do that, guys. I'm not like that. Actually, I did not do that, but it's like, oh, he's mean. He should do that. So, but I want you to catch that there's, some, there's something that's been shaking you. It's a health diagnosis. Or you lost your job. Or it's that kid who's just breaking your heart with their decisions. Or your marriage is like on the brink. And you may be like I was, where you're like, well, our marriage is fine. Let me just say, God is lovingly shaking you through that, saying, your marriage is not okay. It's not okay. So I want you to rise up, God says, and I want you to fully commit to me and submit to me, and I will lead your marriage into resurrection. Some of you have kids that are growing up really fast, and God is saying to you, wake up. Your kids are growing up fast. They need more of your time, and they need you to commit to me fully, God's saying, so that they have a godly example to chase after. Because when they're your age, they're really going to need me in this world that we're in. So rise up. Some of you are going through a struggle. And it's become an addiction. And I'm not just talking drugs and alcohol. That could be overspending. That can be media. That can be so many different things. And you've been feeling like, it's okay. I can stop anytime I want. But you haven't. 
I don't say that to shame you. What God is saying is he's lovingly shaking, saying, I've got power to help you overcome your struggle, your addiction. I am the God who rose from the dead, and I share my power with those who follow me, because who the Son sets free is free indeed. Can I, can I get an amen? You're truly, you can be truly free from that, whatever your addiction is. Whatever it is, he wants you to catch that. Okay, I have one more alarm for you. Um, this alarm is mentioned three different times in Scripture. And the Bible refers to it as the trumpet call of God. In Bible times, uh, the trumpet call of God was blown through this ram's horn. This is called a shofar. And they would blow this in battle to rally the troops. They would blow this to, um, to acknowledge the kingdom of God. They would use this in religious ceremonies. And the Bible talks about in the second coming of Christ when Jesus returns from heaven in the end times to gather his people to be with him. The Bible says that there's going to be a trumpet call of God. Listen very carefully. Where the angel of the Lord will blow the trumpet call of God. And the Bible says everybody in the whole earth will hear this alarm. And this alarm is signifying that Jesus is coming in the sky to come to gather his people to be with him. It's a trumpet call of God. I don't know what it's going to sound like, but I want you to imagine if, the, if he returns this next week. But I do want to say this. The majority, if not all, end time prophecies have been fulfilled. So he could return any day. I don't know when he's going to return. But it could be this week. So I want you to imagine this week if Christ returns and you're like walking to your car. Just picture this in your mind. You're walking to your car or maybe you're working in your kitchen and you hear the trumpet call of God in the sky and you see Jesus start to come from heaven down to gather his people to be with him. I don't know what it'll sound like, but this is what a shofar trumpet call of God sounds like. outside and for me I'm going to be so happy if you're a follower you're going to be like finally finally he's come for me you're going to think about all of the struggles sacrifices living his destiny his plans and purposes everything you've gone through you're going to say it was worth it. It's going to be amazing. Now, many theologians believe that when the trumpet call of God is sounded during the second coming of Christ, that it'll be too late for you to wake up spiritually. That you won't be able to say, Hey, Christ, I now commit my life to you. And that's why Jesus said these words to all of us. He said this. He said, Therefore, Stay awake. Don't go into spiritual complacency. Don't become spiritually apathetic. Stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. And so I encourage you, stay awake. Fully commit your life to Christ. And any time you slip into casualness like I do from time to time, you just get up that next morning and say, I once again fully Commit and surrender and submit my life to you, Christ. I follow you as my Lord and Savior. You're the leader of my life. You lead and I'll follow. And when you do that, oh, you're going to know God, like experience God. You're going to experience even more freedom, peace, and joy, and his power for your hurts, your habits, your hang-ups. And you'll see him resurrect your career and resurrect relationships and resurrect kids that have gone astray and resurrect your finances and so many more things. It's incredible. 
So Easter's in a week. And I'd like you to hear the story of a guy who had some alarms going off in his life. I want you to hear how he woke up. And he not only woke up, he rose up. Running, I love it. It's, it's a sense of freedom. It, it puts you in a calm and a peace where, where you can really think sometimes because you're alone. And it just feels so, so free. And you need, you need as much freedom as you can get when you know when you're in a place like prison you know i was a really angry kid growing up it was rough my me my, my stepfather was always just constantly fighting just constantly pick, picked on me about about everything he never really made me feel um loved just not having a father that made me who uh, that made me a lot of who I who I was. When I was 13, I would, you know, I would drink a lot. When I was 16, I started using ice. I, I even went into dealing it. I've broken into cars, I've I've stolen, I've 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 gotten to a lot of fights. I began attending New Hope Windward in 2005, off and on. I knew the right way of living was to be sober. I tried and, and I'd fall off, I'd get on drugs and I'd stop taking my family to church and I'd get back on the wagon, I'd, you know, I'd clean up, I'm gonna get more involved in the church and da 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 da. But I, I really didn't have a concept of, of having a relationship with God. And in 2007, the height of my drug use, I got picked up. I got charged for uh, robbery in the first, um, weapons possession, uh, burglary, assault, terroristic threatening. I remember my first couple years in Arizona. It, it's just scary to, to you know, um, having to survive. And a, a lot of fear of just, just what my life could become. My mother always brought me to church as a child. My mom, she always told me, um, Matthew 6, Seek him first in his righteousness, you know? She would tell me that because she, she sees that I hustled for all the wrong stuff, you know? I wanted the nice truck and, the, you know, all the nice toys. She always told me, you know, seek him first. But, even in prison, that said, oh, I believe in, you know, I'm reading the Bible and trying to do the right thing, but I really wasn't. I was still um, gambling. I was just, just whatever other legal activities you could think of in prison. I realized then that it wasn't me having the Lord in my life. Church was just a, pretty much a religion, you know? I knew God was there. I knew, you know, He created me and, and all of these things, but I, I didn't really have a concept until later on in life. I was uh, in a pod where I had gotten into a fight. And um, after, after that fight, I remember I just, I said, I said, I had enough. And I, I, I finally got tired of, of carrying my life, my burdens, my worries, <laughs> my future. Um, I got so tired of it. And um, I gave my life to the Lord. Once I gave that to him, it rolled and rolled and rolled and I ended up in the faith pod. They celebrate Jesus, they, they sing worship songs, they, they Bible study. I was able to uh, get into the choir. I, I became the choir leader. I got into a praise and worship band and it was the greatest, it must've been the greatest time I've, I've ever had. In, in the faith pod, I felt like I had purpose. I, I felt like I thrived. I finally was thriving in the faith pod. 
the, the transformation was it's, it's not about me anymore. In, in prison, I loved running. I think the only day I, I would take off is, um, is Sunday to go to church. We are one church, multiple locations, so just want to pause and say hi to all of you at our different locations, Correctional Center. Would you just give a warm welcome to everybody to all of our locations, everyone? Just say hi to your church family. Glad you guys are here with us. We got to watch a lot of the New Hope stuff. And like I said to my close friends, I would tell them, I said, this is my church. Oh, that's, that's my pastor. Pastor Dave would come to visit us in Arizona. It, it felt like a loving father. He would come in there and I felt like my dad came, came to visit me. A lot of these guys have lost hope. And when people come in to share the aloha of Christ, they get a tangible expression of God's love. You know, it, was, it made me proud that New Hope was reaching out to all the way to Arizona. I was free. I was no longer in prison spiritually, um, mentally. I was just looking forward to everything. But spiritually, I was, I was, I was in, in a whole nother, uh, I was in a whole nother realm. When I look back on my life, I really didn't think there was much of a future for me because of, of, of all the things I had, I had experienced. As hard as, as the 20 was, I realized later on it was meant to be. That's the amount of time that, that I needed <laughs> so God could, could shape me. All my life, I had been searching for a father that I didn't have. I realized who my real father is. I learned that if you want true peace, if you want true joy, trust, rely, and depend on God. I never could imagine how, how the Lord could work in such a way where I would end up being, being who I am now. Life isn't perfect, um, and I, I am a work in progress. But your, your life, your problems, there's nothing he can't pull you through. And I understand what it is to be free. I understand now that real freedom is in Christ. Here in the midst 
that beautiful? And would you uh, join me in just thanking Alvin Pinetta for sharing his story with us? That was a powerful story. You know, Alvin's story is an Easter story. It's a story of somebody that experienced the resurrection power of Jesus. And that same power is available to you for everyday life. How do you experience it? Get to know God. Like really know Him. And commit to Him fully. Surrender to Him. And then you'll experience this freedom that Alvin was talking about. You'll experience more joy and peace and power and stamina in the struggles. And you'll be able to discover what God's plans and purposes are for you this week and beyond and next year. And then you can fulfill your destiny where when you finally take your, your last breath here on earth, you go, I'm meeting you, Jesus. That'll be amazing. That'll be the greatest resurrection you ever experience. Be in heaven with Jesus. Can you say amen to that, everybody? Amen. I'm going to lead us in an Easter prayer at all of our locations. If you're watching this online at home, if all of you would just bow your heads with me, if you don't mind, and close your eyes. It's just a time for us in focusing on God. That's why we ask you to close your eyes. And as your eyes are closed, um, I just want to say something to you. I don't think you're here by accident. I really don't. I think God guided you here through a friend or an invitation or a sign. Because he just wanted to get your attention long enough so that you could hear these words. God says, I love you. You're valuable to me. You were worth dying for. And I have more for you. So come to life. Get to know me. Get to really know me. Commit to me. I hope you experience freedom. Discover why I put you here on earth. I'll help you fulfill your destiny. We'll live together in heaven and eternity. So as your heads are bowed, if you've never invited Christ into your life, that's how you get to experience this. It's not something you earn, it's just a free gift. So if you've never had a relationship with him, I'll give you a chance to raise your hand here in a few moments. And that's just your way. As your hand's up, you're just saying, God, I want a relationship with you. I realize that for many of us here, uh, we've already said that prayer. But maybe we've just been kind of distracted by life and, and drifted from God and church and our commitment to Him has been more casual than committed. And if that's you, man, it's never too late to recommit to Christ. It's something I do every single day. So I would encourage you, if you've drifted or you're more casual than committed, I encourage you just recommit your life to Christ. He will welcome you with arms open wide to you. Just come home to Christ. So if you'd like to begin a relationship with Christ or you want to renew and recommit your life to Christ, go ahead and right now. Just lift your hand up. Just lift your hand up wherever you're at. All these theaters, yeah, so many hands up here. You're at home. You're at one of our other New Hope Winter locations. Just let God see your heart to commit to Him. Just lift your hand up. Yeah, so many hands. God sees your hand in the back and middle and the side. lead us in a, a life-changing prayer and um, this will help you begin a relationship with God and or recommit. And uh, we're going to pray this prayer with you out loud, so don't worry, you don't have to pray this alone. But I do encourage you, pray this from your heart. Pray these words. Just say, Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus. I believe he died and rose from the grave. Please forgive me for my sins. Give me the gift of eternal life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, be my Lord and Savior, my Heavenly Father and friend. I completely commit my life to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Please, amen. Please, amen. Let's go ahead and congratulate those who prayed that prayer for the first time. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, in a few moments, we'll dismiss in all of our other theaters. If you prayed that prayer, we have a free gift for you. This is called our Yes Packet. If you'd like to join us for that, we'll talk more about that. And just 
just uh, let them know and they'll hand it to you. And as I shared earlier, we certainly invite you to uh, enjoy our weary series that's starting next Sunday. You might want to invite some friends who are kind of fatigued from life and problems and uh, bring them with you. And we're having a good time learning how to find rest in this hurried pace that we live in in this world. So let me end by saying this. Um, thank you so much for carving out time in your busy life to celebrate Easter with us. Our team is very honored that you're with us today. And we just want to say on behalf of myself and our team, have a happy Easter and may God bless you.